So today what we're, we're going to talk about is simple harmonic motion. And that's where motion is just going up and down and repeating, okay? Um, and so we have, what we're going to have is um, this weight that um, I'm planning on showing you. I don't know if I did yet, okay? So um, I'm planning on showing you in class. But like here's a mass, okay, so a weight. And it's hooked onto a spring. And right here where it's just hanging, okay, would be the rest position, okay? So this would be rest. And then we're going to define this, all right? Now, this is going to be different than what you're used to. Um, we're going to pull it down in this direction, and that's going to be positive position. Okay? So going down is positive. Usually we think of um, being something being measured from the ground and going up would be positive. But this is going to be positive position going down, which would mean going up would be negative position, okay? So this thing's going up and down. Right here would be rest. If it's not moving and just hanging there, that would be the rest position. So once it starts moving up, that would actually be negative velocity because we're going in the negative position direction. And positive velocity would mean it's going down, okay? So here we go. So um, a weight hanging from a spring is stretched five units beyond its rest position, which is S of t equals zero, and released at time t equals zero to bob up and down. That means just go up and down, okay? Its position at time t is given by the function S of t is equal to five cosine t. And then what I wanna do is find the velocity and the acceleration at time t, and also describe the motion from zero to two pi. So this is the position Okay, so just after zero, it's positive position and then negative position. And it's positive because we pulled it down, okay? So we know S of T from the description above that S of T is equal to five times cosine of T. Okay, so this is the velocity, all right? And so once we pull it down, okay, and we release it, it's going up, all right? So we pull it down, we release it, and it's going up at first. That's why the velocity is negative in here because it's going up and when it goes up, that's negative velocity because um, we've, how we've defined the, the orientation of where negative is, okay? So V of T would equal the derivative of the position, right? So that would be five times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine of T. So V of T, is equal to negative five sine t, okay? And then let's find the acceleration, okay? So a of t, a of t is equal to the derivative of velocity. So that'd be negative five times the derivative of sine t, which is cosine t. So cosine t, so that gives us a of t is equal to negative five cosine of t. All right, one other thing we need to do is we need to figure out, okay, what causes these to be zero, okay? So what times is five cosine t, the position gonna be zero? So when the position is zero, that means it's right here at the rest spot, okay? Because that's what we're calling zero position, okay? So zero is equal to five cosine of t. That would be when cosine of t would equal zero, and that's gonna happen at t is equal to pi over two and three pi over two, okay? And then over here, we're gonna set the velocity equal to zero because we wanna also know where the position is zero and where the velocity is zero, okay? To figure out where it's negative and positive. So we're gonna set this equal to zero. So zero is equal to negative five sine of t, um, we're dividing both sides by negative five, so that would give us um, zero is equal to sine of t, or sine t equals zero. And that's gonna happen at t is equal to zero, pi, and two pi. And it's also happening out here at three pi, okay? Um, but I only wanna describe it from zero to two pi, just to make it simple on us. All right, and then the acceleration, we wanna figure out where the acceleration is zero, because then everywhere else it's either positive or it's negative, okay? So zero is equal to negative five cosine of t 
which means cosine of t would be equal to zero, okay? And then that would be happening at t is equal to pi over two and three pi over two. It's also happening here, but again, I'm only describing it from zero to two pi. All right, okay, so now is where I would make a number line. So we're gonna do that next. So we're gonna make our number line here. So I'm gonna make it going across. All right, so this is gonna, we're gonna start it at zero and we're gonna end it at two pi. And um, right in the middle would be pi. And right in here would be pi over two. So I'm using each of these to break this up. So pi over two and then three pi over two. All right, so now we wanna look at the combinations of, okay, the position and the velocity and the acceleration to determine, okay, where it's positive, where it's negative, and then we could tell if it's moving towards the origin, away from the origin, speeding up, slowing down, moving up, moving down, all of those things, okay? Um, so from zero to pi over two, okay, so we're looking at this from zero to pi over two, right here's pi over two, we can tell from the graph that the position is positive. So S of T is greater than zero. Um, the velocity from zero to pi over two would be negative. I'm sorry, uh, yeah, negative. So V of T is less than zero. All right. And then the acceleration would also be negative. Okay. So A of T would be less than zero. All right, from pi over two to pi, the position would be negative. That's this piece right here. The position would be negative. Um, the velocity from pi over two to pi, okay, the velocity would be negative. So V of T is negative. And over here, um, the acceleration, so from pi over two to pi is positive. Okay, so A of T is greater than zero. And then from pi to three pi over two, that'd be this part right here. The position is negative, so S of T is less than zero. From pi to three pi over two, the velocity is positive, so V of T is greater than zero. And then from pi to three pi over two, the acceleration is also positive, so A of T is greater than zero. From three pi over two to two pi, um, that would be this part right here on the position graph. And so we can tell that the position is positive. So S of T is greater than zero. From three pi over two to two pi, right in this part, the velocity is positive. And from three pi over two to two pi, the acceleration is negative. Okay, so this is telling me it's speeding up, slowing down, speeding up, slowing down, okay? Um, velocity being negative, it's moving up. It's still moving up. So from zero to pi, it's actually moving up the whole time, okay? Um, and then, um, and you can tell it's moving up because the velocity is negative all in here, right? Okay. And then the velocity is positive. So now, okay, positive mean in this scenario, positive means going down. So positive here, positive here. Um, so it's going down. And yeah, because from pi to two pi, the velocity is above, which means it's moving in the positive direction and it's down. So from here to here, it's moving down. Okay. So it's going all the way up and then all the way back down, and then that's it, okay? All right, hopefully this is starting to, you're starting to catch on, okay? So what, here's the first question. Let me, then let's start answering these questions that I have. So here's the question. What is the position of the weight at the start? So at the start, time is zero, okay? So at the start, T is equal to zero and we want to know we want to ask um, we're trying to find out the position so we're going to use the position function so s of t and we know from above that s of t is equal to five times cosine of t so that'd be s of zero that we're going to plug in and that'd be five times cosine of zero 
okay? So angle zero, the cosine of angle zero, zero is right here, the angle zero is right here, and that means x is one, y is zero, and r equals one. So cosine of that would be x over r, so one over one. So this is one right here. So that means s of zero is equal to five times one, or s of zero is equal to five. So it started at five um, in the positive um, orientation, right? So what that means is it started five units below because positive is going down, okay? It started, the, the weight started five units, because we don't have the units defined here, five units below the rest position. And that's what that means, okay? All right, so next one is when is the weight above and below the rest position? And we need to give reasons why, okay? So we know it's above when the position is positive, okay? So the weight is above the rest position. And so we're looking for where it's, um, and I'm gonna slide it down just slightly so we can actually, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Okay, so we know it's, the weight is above the rest position when the position function is, a, is positive. So not when it's zero though, because that would mean it's at the rest position. So right here, it's gonna be below. Okay, so because remember over here, negative position is actually above. So we're looking for, for, for it to be above, we're actually looking for where it's negative. So right in here, I may have said that mistakenly just a minute ago, okay? So right here is where it's gonna be um, negative, okay? Or where it's, where it's negative, which means where it's above, okay? So it's above the rest position for pi over two, to three pi over two. And that's the only time from zero to two pi that that happens. And it's because S of T is less than zero, because less than zero means negative and negative means above the rest position, okay? Because S of T is less than zero, um, four, or on, I should say on. When you're writing interval notation, you say on, on the interval. So on pi over two, two, three pi over two, period, okay? So what does it mean to be below? Well, below is positive position, right? So we'd be looking for where the position is positive. And from zero to two pi, it'd be right here, and right here. Now, we wouldn't include pi over two, and we also wouldn't include um, three pi over two, because right there, the position is not positive, it's actually zero. So it's all of these, not including right here, and all of these, not including right here. I'm gonna slide it up a little bit. Okay, so the weight is below the rest position on, I actually should, I should have put on right there too, on, and we'd include zero, two, pi over two, parenthesis, union, and then we'd have a parenthesis, three pi over two, comma, two pi, bracket because, and I always have to think of this because it's not normal for me, okay? Um, below is positive position and it's because S of T is greater than zero on zero to pi over two, union three pi over two to two pi bracket, period. 
Okay, and that's the reason it's it's below the rest position. And remember, this is hard. Below actually means positive, okay? Because the way we defined it, it's the way the book defines it. That's not. If I was doing this experiment, I wouldn't do it that way. All right, I'd be positive would be up. All right, but it's not me. Okay, let's go to the next page. So for this next question, um, when is the weight moving up? and moving down. So moving up, we would have negative velocity because that's the negative direction, okay? So moving up, V of T is gonna have to be less than zero. And moving down, down, the positive position is going down, so moving down, V of T, and the moving is telling you to look at the velocity, okay? So moving down would be V of T is greater than zero, okay? So the weight, is moving up, and now we gotta look where's the velocity negative, okay? So the velocity is negative, um, not, it's, the velocity is not negative at zero, and it's not negative at pi, everything in between, okay? So the weight is moving up on um, zero to pi because V of T, is less than zero on zero to pi. And then the weight, this time I'm gonna use inequalities, okay? So the weight is moving down, just so you see it different ways, okay? Is moving down. When we use inequalities, instead of using the word on, we use the word for, okay? And so for moving down, we're looking for where the where it's positive, um, the velocity is positive. So that would be in between pi and two pi. And once again, we wouldn't include pi because the velocity isn't positive there and also not two pi, okay? So we'd say pi less than t less than two pi because, I like saying it like that, because v of t is greater than zero for pi less than t less than 2 pi, period. So, I mean, my point of this is I want you to be aware of other ways to write it, but you can write interval notation or you can write inequality. It's whatever your choice is, okay? So the next question, and I'm gonna slide this up a little bit, is when does the weight stop? So let's go to that. So we know the weight stops whenever the velocity is zero, okay? And from zero to two pi, the velocity would be zero at zero, at pi, and also at two pi, okay? So the weight stops at t equals zero, t equals pi, and t equals two pi, because V of T is equal to zero for T equals zero, T equals pi, and T is equal to two pi, period. Now, I'm gonna show you another way you could write this, which would be just hokey dokey, all right? And that would be this, okay? so. Because, and you could replace all of this right here with V of zero equals zero, V of pi equals zero, and V of two pi equals zero, period. Okay, so, so that little statement right there could be replaced with this. Just wanna give you options, okay? And then, um, the next thing is, um, when does the weight change direction? So let's answer that. How's this non-technology way of moving this graph up and down, right? I just folded it over. I think I'm so clever. <laughs> All right, so I know. You guys are like shaking your head at me right now. All right, when does the weight change directions? Okay, from zero to two pi. Okay, so we know it's going to change directions whenever the velocity changes signs. So we're going to look at the velocity graph. And the only time the velocity graph changes signs is right here at pi, because it changed from being negative to positive. So from zero to two pi, that's the only time it changes directions. Now, if we extended the time period out, 
past two pi, then it would have also changed directions right here at two pi, okay? So when does the weight change directions? The weight changes directions. at t is equal to pi because v of t, which is the velocity, changed. You could just say change signs at this t value and that's perfectly fine. I, for future things, we need to know how it changes. So that's why I'm including it, okay? To, to get us starting to think about that. But if you just say change signs, that's fine. Okay, so it changed signs at pi because it, it changed from being negative to positive. So changed because V of T changed from negative to positive at T equals pi. Once again, if you just say it changed signs at T equals pi, you're fine. All right, and then the, the, I think it's the last question here. Okay, when does the weight speed up and when does it slow down? So we're gonna look at the combinations of um, velocity and acceleration. So when does the weight speed up? Let's do that one first. So we know it's gonna speed up when either the velocity and acceleration are either both positive or both negative. So right here, it's speeding up, okay? So the weight, speeds up on, okay, the interval from zero to pi over two. Now, we gotta ask ourselves, okay, we're looking at the velocity is zero right here, um, but it's negative here, okay? So if one of them is zero, you're not gonna include it. So, so we're not gonna include zero, okay? Comma, and then, um, pi over to pi over two, right? And we're not gonna include pi over two because at pi over two, the acceleration zero. Um, and is there anywhere else? And yeah, between pi and three pi over two because there, they're both positive, okay? And so you could use a union or you could say and on the interval pi to three pi over two. And at pi, the velocity is zero, so we can't include it. And at three pi over two, the acceleration is zero, so I can't include either one of those. If, if at either of those endpoints, it was um, positive, then we would need to include that endpoint. Okay, so because, and for this one, it's because V of T is less than zero and a of t is less than zero on zero to pi over two. And v of t is greater than zero and a of t is greater than zero on pi to three pi over two. And then slowing down when they're opposites, right? So right here between pi over two and pi, that's the interval, then we need to check the endpoints, okay? And also um, from three pi over two to two pi, they're opposite, right? So the weight slows down on um, pi over two to pi. Okay, so pi over two to pi, at pi over two, all right, again, the, the acceleration is zero there, so we can't include pi over two. And at pi, the velocity is zero. Uh, you know, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Pi over, wait, I said it right, I'm sorry. Pi over two, the acceleration is zero. At pi over two, the velocity is negative. That's right here, okay? Um, and so at pi, here the, here the velocity is zero. You guys, let me start over again. <laughs> sorry about that, okay? Let me say it again. All right, it's slowing down, this is right, okay? At pi over two, and right here the velocity is negative at pi over two, but the acceleration is zero at pi over two, that's why we're not gonna include it. At pi, the velocity is zero, but the acceleration is positive, but because one of them is zero, we're not gonna include it. And then instead of and, this time I'm gonna write union, 
okay? And it's also right between three pi over two and two pi. So three pi over two to two pi. At three pi over two, the velocity is positive, but the acceleration is zero, so we can't include it. And then at two pi, the velocity is zero, but the acceleration is negative, so we can't include it. So because, okay, now why this first one? It's because V of T is less than zero. And A of T is greater than zero on pi over two to pi. And V of T for this one, V of T is greater than zero and a of t is less than zero on the same interval, three pi over two to two pi. Let me slide it up, three pi over two to two pi. All right, and that's describing the motion, okay? We could also talk about where is it moving towards, and it, we wouldn't call it the origin, we'd call it the rest position, all right? And so we would know it's moving towards with combinations of position and velocity. So if we're below and moving up, right, below would be positive position, moving up would be negative velocity, then we'd be moving towards, okay? So right here, um, positive, we have positive position, so we're, we're below, but the velocity is negative, so we're moving up, right? So we'd be moving towards the rest position. Here, um, position is negative, so now we're above, but we're still moving up. So because we're above and moving up, we're moving, we're moving away from the rest position. And then now position is negative, so it'd be above, and velocity is positive, so now we're moving down. So we're above, but we're moving down, so we're moving towards the rest position. So we're above the rest position, but we're moving down, so we're moving towards the rest position. And then here, um, we're below the rest position because we have positive position. And we also have positive velocity, so we're moving um, down. So we're, we're below and moving down, so we'd be moving away from the rest position. Okay, so the origin is where it's zero, basically, okay? All right, now I didn't ask that question, but I want you to be aware of that and know how to do it. Okay, that's it, guys for this, okay? So we have a couple more problems that we need to do. So now what I wanna do is go over this problem, okay? Find the equation of the lines that are tangent and normal to the graph of f of x equals tan x over x at x equals two. So, okay, we want equations of the tangent line. We want the equations, so we want tangent line equation and we want normal line equation. Before I can do the normal, I need to do the tangent. Okay, so um, first off, let's figure out what is f of two, because I'm gonna need that point, right? I need a point and the slope. So my function is f of x is equal to tan x over x. So then f of two would equal tan of two divided by two. Okay, so now we're gonna go to our graphing calculator. We're gonna put that in and see what it is. So from our graphing calculator, we got negative 1.093. And so right now, our point, our point could be written um, as x is 2 and y is uh, the approximation of negative 1.093, or we could write 2, comma, and the actual value is tan of 2 over 2. So this is the actual value. This is the approximation of it. So this is just an estimate. This is the actual um, one, okay? So now, um, to do the tangent line, we need the slope of the tangent at x equals two. So we need to find f prime of two. But before we find f prime of two, we need to find f prime of 
x, okay? So f prime of x would equal, and we're gonna have to apply the quotient rule. So right here, okay, the derivative of the top, so the derivative, derivative of tan x is secant squared x. We should know that, okay, so secant squared x times the bottom, which is x minus the top, so that'd be tan x, times the derivative of the bottom, which would be one, all over the bottom squared. So that'd be x squared, okay? There's actually no cleaning up here. Um, one thing I would do is instead of writing it like this, I would put this x in front of the trig function. So f prime of x is equal to x secant squared x, and then minus just tan x over x squared. So we're gonna do f prime of um, two. So that'd be two secant squared um, of two minus tan of two all over two squared, which would be four. Okay, now to put this in our calculator, our calculator, graphing calculators don't have secant, all right? So what is secant? Well, it's one over cosine. So this could be rewritten as two parenthesis, one over cosine of two, close the parenthesis, close the parenthesis for the fraction because we need to square it, and then minus, and our calculators do have the tan button, okay, over Four. So this is how, what we're going to have to put in our calculator, okay? So let's go to our graphing calculator. Let's put that in, all right? And then we'll come back and write the answer. So from the graphing calculator, we got an approximation of 3.433. All right, so for our tangent line equation, at x equals 2, all right, the exact equation would be y is equal to my slope which is this exact value, okay? So two secant squared of two minus tan of two over four times x minus my x value, which is two, and then plus the y value, right? So it'd be plus, and the y value is tan of two, over two. Now that's the exact value, okay? That's the exact equation. Exact. It would help to be. It would. It would help to spell exactly exact, right? I can't even spell. Oh my gosh! Please forgive me. Hi, yi yi. It's been a long day. Okay, this would be the exact equation, and this would be the approximate equation. Okay, so putting this on the calculator, we would have y is approximately, okay, 3.433 times x minus 2. And then the y value was negative um, 1.093, so minus 1.093. So you just need to be aware of both of them, okay? And so then the, the tangent line, okay, now remember for, or not the tangent line, we did the tangent line. The normal line, what we have to do is we need to do the negative reciprocal of the slope. So it would be the negative reciprocal of this. So we would need to flip this and change the sign, okay? So um, normal slope at x equals two, 
would be um, M perpendicular would be negative, and then we'd have four on top, and then we'd have the two secant squared of two minus tan of two in the bottom. Okay, so the normal equation, normal line, let me slide this up a little bit, normal line equation for the exact one would be y is equal to this slope right here. So it'd be negative four over two secant squared of two minus tan of two and then times x minus two and then um, plus tan two over two. So that'd be exact and then the approximate and what I would do is just write y is equal to, and the reciprocal of this, right? The negative reciprocal, so negative 1 over 3.433 times x minus 2, and then minus the 1.093. All right, so equation of the tangent line, equation of the normal line, both exact and the approximate ones, okay? All right, let's do one more problem and we're done. Woohoo. All right, so um, here's the next example. Find y double prime. So that's the second derivative if y is equal to secant x, okay? So we're gonna start with, um, and I lost my pen. Here's my pen. y is equal to secant of x, then y prime, Okay, so that'd be the derivative of secant, and the derivative of secant would be secant x tan x. And now we need to take the derivative of that in order to get the second derivative. So y double prime. Well, to find the der derivative of this, I need to use um, the product rule. So the derivative of secant x is secant x tan x times the second function, which is tan x, and then plus secant x times the der derivative of tan x, which is secant squared x. Okay, so cleaning this up, y double prime becomes secant x tan squared x, and plus, and secant x times secant squared x becomes secant cubed x. All right, so one thing we can do here is because we have them both in common is a secant x. We can factor that out. So y double prime is equal to secant of x times tan squared x plus secant squared x because I factored a secant x out of that. All right, now we need to ask ourselves, okay, so when you start seeing squared trig functions, you should be thinking Pythagorean identity, okay? So is there a Pythagorean identity where that involves tan squared x plus secant squared x, okay? So the one that you need to know, that you have to know is cosine squared x plus sine squared x is always equal to one. Okay, you got to know that one. That one comes, it's going to come up over and over and over again. All right. Now, how, how we can modify this is I want to wind up with a tan, right? So sine over cosine gives you the tan squared. So I want to divide each of these by cosine squared. Okay. So if I divide this by cosine squared X, that's going to give me one. Plus, if I divide this by cosine squared X, that's going to give me tan squared X is equal to, and if I divide the one by, uh, by cosine squared x, that gives me secant squared x, all right? So here's the thing, there's no way that um, we can manipulate this and get tan squared x plus secant squared x. So we can't get it so it becomes like one or negative one. 
because as soon as we move one of these trig functions, one of them becomes negative, right? Because right now they're, they're on opposite sides of the equals and they're both positive right now. So there's no way to obtain this, but there is something else we could do. Okay. And it's this is that we can either replace this secant squared X. Okay. Or we could replace um, the tan squared X because we could move the tan squared X over. Okay. Or, the one over and get what tan squared X is. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that, okay? So tan squared X is equal to secant squared X minus one. Now I'm gonna tell you the reason I'm doing this. The reason I'm doing this is because this becomes a difference of squares, okay? That's why I moved this one, all right? Okay, so that means Y double prime could be, and by the way, I should say this is, this is a valid answer perfectly good answer. Okay. There's just other ways of writing it. And I need you to be aware of that. Okay. And I'm emphasizing that probably more than I have in years past, because this is the part that was at the very end of what we learned last spring. Okay. So this tan squared X is going to be replaced with secant squared X minus one. So this right here is going to be replaced with secant squared X minus one. So we have secant X times, and then this is secant squared X minus one and then plus that secant squared X. Okay, so that's helpful because now I can combine some things. So Y double prime is equal to secant of X times, and here we have secant squared X and here we're adding another secant squared X. So that makes means we have two of them. So two secant squared X and then minus one. And really that's about all, that's as far as you could go, okay? You really want to normally get these down to one trig function. That's another reason, okay? Um, because we're going to need to solve this. And if it's just one trig function, we can solve this, okay? So that's where this is going. Like, we're going to need to be able to solve that. All right, guys, that's it for today. I know this is another long lesson, okay? I promise they will get shorter. And some will, get, some will be long like this, and some will be short, okay? It just ebbs and flows, all right? You guys have a great day. See ya.